Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I am Anhar and welcome back to my safety webcast. Whether you are a developer, system admin or just someone looking to experiment with cloud computing, creating a Linux virtual machine in Microsoft Azure is a great way to get started. Azure provides scalable infrastructure, a wide range of Linux distributions and robust security making it ideal for testing, development or even hosting production workloads. In this video, we will walk through the steps to set up a Linux virtual machine in Azure using the Azure portal. In the first step, we need to log in to the Azure portal. Open your preferred web browser, navigate to portal.azure.com and sign in with your Azure account. Ensure your account has sufficient privileges to create a new virtual machine. Under Azure Services, select Virtual Machines. This will open the Virtual Machines page. Click on Create and then select Virtual Machine. If you have multiple subscriptions, select the subscription in which you wanted to create a virtual machine. If you only have one subscription, it will be selected automatically. Choose the resource group you want to use or create a new one to store this Linux VM. For this example, I have already created a resource group named Linux Test RG. We will store this Linux VM in this resource group. Grouping VM related resources make them easier to manage and delete later. Choose a unique name for your VM. This name will be used to identify the VM within Azure. Now select the Azure Data Center location where your VM will be hosted. Choose a region geographically close to you or your users for better performance and lower latency. For this example, we are hosting the VM in the East US region. For availability option for this VM, I am going to select no infrastructure redundancy required. Keep in mind, we are creating this virtual machine for testing purposes. More advanced options like availability zones or sets provide higher uptime guarantees by distributing VM instances. Security type determines the level of security features applied to our VM tailored to our workload and compliance needs. Azure Virtual Machine offers three security types, Standard, Trusted Launch and Confidential. Standard is suitable for basic workloads, while Trusted Launch provides enhanced security features like Secure Boot and Virtual TPM. Confidential VMs provide the highest level of security and confidentiality for workloads handling sensitive data. For this example, we are going to select Trusted Launch Virtual Machines. Next, we need to select an image for this virtual machine. Image is the operating system template for your VM. If you haven't chosen an image before, you can choose the right image from the drop down list. You can also browse all available images for creating virtual machines including both public and private images. You can choose any Linux distribution such as Ubuntu, CentOS or others. For this example, we will select the Ubuntu Server 2204 LTS Gen 2 image. Let's scroll down. Azure Sport Virtual Machines offer significant cost savings by using unused Azure capacity but they can be evicted at any time when resources are needed. They are ideal for uninterruptible workloads like batch jobs or development or test environments. You can select the checkbox as per your requirement. In this example, I am not selecting this option. Now choose the size according to your need and budget. Azure will populate the size for you but you can also browse all size to find one that fits your need. Note that you cannot find all VM size in all the Azure regions. Here, we will use the standard B1S VM size which has one virtual CPU and one GB of RAM. Remember, free services is eligible for this VM size. In the bracket, you can see the estimated monthly cost for running this VM. As well as on a sidebar, you can see the estimated monthly cost for creating this virtual machine. On the administrator account, select password. The SSH public key option is recommended but for this example, I'll select the second option. Set up administrator account credentials to access the VM. First, enter the name of administrator account. Now type and read up the password for the admin account. Make sure the password is at least 12 characters long and meets the complexity requirements. With inbound port rules, you can define what traffic can access your VM from the internet. 
Report inbound port rules usually allow SSH traffic. Ensure that this is enabled. This is managed by a network security group which functions as a basic firewall. This port allows you to remotely access your VM using SSH. Select next disk to proceed to the disk configuration options. You can see the OS disk details based on your selected VM size. If needed, you can add additional data disk to this VM. Leave to deport and click next. Now define network connectivity for your virtual machine. By default, the virtual network, subnet and public IP details are already configured. With this new VM, all these details are going to create it automatically. In this example, we will leave them as they are. Network interface enables a VM to communicate with other VMs, internet and on-premises servers. From here, you can also open required inbound ports. For example, let's say we want to access the VM over the internet using SSH. For this, we need to open the SSH inbound port. If you don't have this port open, you will not be able to SSH into this virtual machine. I'm going to select the checkbox, delete public IP and NIC when the VM is deleted. So I don't forget to delete the public IP address when I delete the VM. Now go to tags. Enter the tag name and its corresponding value. When done, select review plus create. Wait for the validation to complete. If the validation passes successfully, we are ready to create the virtual machine. If validation is failed, then review the mandatory parameters that are not defined or required. In our case, the validation was successful. Review your selections before creating the Linux VM. If everything looks good, click the create button to deploy a new Linux virtual machine in Azure. It can take anywhere from 2 to 5 minutes to deploy the virtual machine. Wait for the VM deployment to complete. Step 1. Initializing deployment. Step 2. Submitting deployment. Step 3. Deployment is in progress. In step 4, networking related Azure resources will be created. Networking related Azure resources have been created successfully. VM creation process has been started. VM has been created successfully. Click the go to resources button to view the dashboard of our virtual machine. We have successfully created an Azure Linux virtual machine using the Azure portal. We will be on VM Overview tab. Verify all properties of the VM including resource group, location, VM size and family, operating system type, public IP and tags. Our Ubuntu server is now up and running in Azure. Let's connect to our virtual machine using SSH. From the Overview tab, copy the public IP address. Now open the run menu, type cmd and press enter. At the command prompt, type ssh msft admin at, now paste the copied IP address and hit enter to connect to our Azure Linux VM. Type yes and press enter key. Enter the password you created for the virtual machine and then press enter. Now the Linux virtual machine is connected and can be easily used from the local machine. You have successfully set up and connected to a Linux VM using SSH. The secure access method ensures your connection is protected while giving you full control over your VM. Whenever you no longer need to use the VM, make sure to shut it down to avoid unnecessary usage. That's all for this video on how to create a new Linux virtual machine in Azure. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Azure and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.